Hey guys, what's up? It's Crystal. Welcome back to the channel. We're doing a podcast today. It's a paranormal podcast. For those of you brave enough to join the circle, this is an Ascension podcast. This is highly requested from many of you in my DMs. And we're going to be talking about how to communicate with your spirit guides. This is a podcast I've been saying I wanted to do for a while. I didn't feel prepared. I didn't feel like I was ready. <clears throat> and then I had uh, basically a meeting last night with my guides and my spirit team and they made it feel like a sense of urgency that I needed to do this. So I actually just went to the Renaissance Fair. <laughs> Today is Friday the 11th in October 2024. It's 9.08 p.m. Um, and normally after I get back from the Renaissance Fair, I'm just going to pass out because I ate all kinds of delicious, terrible food. But I knew um, my guides were like, this needs to be filmed tonight so that you can edit it tomorrow and get it up. And I said, okay. Basically, at 4.44, 4.44 a.m., <clears throat> I woke up and wrote this. This is today's podcast. I wrote that out at 4.44 a.m. I'm going to be very transparent. So what happened was I went to bed last night. Um, you know, I'm usually in bed by like 10, falling asleep by 11. I ended up having this dream that I was with my family on the other side. And when I say my family, it's like everyone that's crossed over. So... My mom was there, <clears throat> my dad was there, my aunt was there, my aunt's husband, who was my uncle, was there, uh, my grandmother was there. I had ancestors that were at this table that I don't even know, but I knew they were related from my lineage, um, indigenous. Um, my cousins that have crossed over were there. It was like this huge party. Basically, I, I woke up and I was in this big, dark room with this huge round table, and I'm talking massive table that would seat maybe 30 or 40 people. And we're all sitting around the table. And, you know, sometimes when I have these experiences on the other side, I, I'm disassociated, right? It's just natural. When I wake up in that state on the other side, sometimes I'm confused. And last night, I was confused. I wake up at this table, and it's my whole family who's crossed over. And they're laughing and telling stories and they're talking about their time on earth. And I'm really kind of irritated, to be honest. It put me in a bad mood. And it put me in a bad mood because, you know, like, for example, <clears throat> my aunt was there who was an alcoholic. She died an alcoholic. She died of alcoholism. She killed her liver. Um, her husband was there, my uncle. He passed away from Rona. Um, he went to sleep and didn't wake up, basically didn't know he had Rona really bad. And um, <clears throat> he actually passed right before my mom. My uncle in particular, and he stands out so much in the dream last night. My uncle was crusty, if I'm putting it like just very blunt. He didn't believe in ghosts. He didn't believe in the afterlife. Although he had a lot of experiences because he was the one that uh, purchased my family home in Denver. I told you it's a very old home. Been in many families for many generations. And so he knew the house was haunted, but, you know, they would hear people walk up and down the stairs, but he never wanted to acknowledge it. This uncle <clears throat> actually came to my premiere when I was on Travel Channel. That was my really first, um, my first really big, you know, premiere on television was Travel Channel. My mom had this really big party with hundreds of people, and she rented these two huge flat screen TVs and um, had like a buffet, and she invited the news stations were there, and I got to be on the news, and she made it really special. My uncle came, and I remember he pulled me aside. And I was on such a high from being on Paranormal Challenge, and my uncle pulls me aside at the party. He's like, you know, ghosts are just bullshit, right? And he was like, you need to get a normal job. You need to get a regular job. So the point of me telling you this is to see him in the dream, sitting there just happy, laughing, telling stories. Um, those aren't necessarily the memories that I have of him. What kind of stories were they telling? Stories about me. It was a meeting with 30 dead people, or, or me, to me, perceived dead. Um, sitting in a circle talking about their time on earth with me, saying, oh, Crystal, do you remember this? Oh, Crystal, do you remember that? And of course my mother is, you know, ahead of the, she's, she's running the show. That's just how she was. I'm sitting there in this dream and, and I'm literally got my arms crossed and I'm like pissed. 
I'm just irritated because I'm looking at all of them like, <clears throat> you know, you're, you're smiling and you're happy. And you're telling all these lovely stories about Earth when I was a child. Yet, you're all dead. You know, like, I am still alive on that floating rock by myself. So, like, I don't know why this is so fun to sit here and have a conversation. And everybody got really serious. And, like, they knew, they understood all of a sudden my perspective. And that's something that I've learned from interacting with the other side is that our loved ones that have crossed on sometimes easily forget what it's like to be human. They easily forget that because the vessel that we're in, this meat suit, is the temporary body. That's actually home. This is not home. That's home. So this part of our life, even though it feels like a hundred years or however long you live on this planet, feels like forever. It's nothing in comparison to, you know, our eternal being on the other side. So it's really easy to forget a lot. And this conversation that I was having with them, um, it continued. They were like, well, you know, when we die and, and we pass on, we don't remember the bad stuff. We don't remember the bad stuff. And this was in the dream where my mom stood up in front of everyone and she reiterated that she does not care to think about or discuss how she passed. She understands that she was murdered and she does not care. It was a little teeny part of her life. Um, you know, that, you know, spirit will take care of that person when they cross over. Um, and she, and basically what she was saying, or they were all saying was when they cross over, they only think of the happy and the good. That's the only thing that they take with them basically. Um, and so I'm, I'm hoping that this helps someone out there. And that's why this was such a sense of urgency for my spirit team. So after I had this really intense dream with my family on the other side, uh, my guide said, you need to wake up because um, we're going to channel through you and we're going to write down your podcast for tomorrow. So I need you to wake up right now. And I was like, okay, like, I don't even know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even know what I'm doing. And they're like, yeah, you need to wake up. So we're going to talk about this. This is what I channeled from them. So a lot of people are going to ask me, hey, Crystal, how do you channel? Hey, Crystal, how, do you, how are you a psychic? Hey, Crystal, how do you have mediumship abilities? And according to my guides, I'm not special. Everyone can do this, anyone can tap into it, and I'm going to teach you how. So the first question is, who is your spirit team? So your spirit team, we all incarnate with, <clears throat> I just heard, three to five spirit guides, okay? I have five. Uh, the more spirit guides that you have, the more important life position, life role you have on that planet, okay? Sometimes they will switch out, sometimes one will step in and a few will step back. We also incarnate with one guardian angel each. Now other people can also consist of your spirit team. This can be if you have adult children that cost, crossed over. Um, I mean, even, even your children, you know, like when kids pass away, um, on the other side, they just go back to their normal age. From what I can tell, and I've experienced this over and over, we're all about the age of 36 on the other side. Age doesn't exist on the other side, but I'm giving you a visualization for what they look like. Although your children who have passed, if they were in infancy or a child, they may visit you in their child human form, but that's not actually how old they are on the other side, right? So anyone can step in and be a part of your, um, I call it the outer circle of your spirit team. So obviously you have your spirit guides, your higher self is, is running the show, right? So your higher self, your spirit guides, one angel, and then the outer circle is, it can be family, it can be friends, it can be <clears throat> children, it can be anybody. It's interesting because I'm just reading through this. I, I haven't actually read through this since 4.44 in the morning. This is not quite sounds like me if that makes sense when I was channeling like I said woke up at 4 4 4 a.m. last night family meeting I'm human and I'm sad explain family members and their deaths memories of my childhood spirit good memories only death and bad memories do not exist my uncle and aunt oh, oh that was another interesting thing that I had with my uncle so you know my uncle was really angry <clears throat> when he was on earth and he was just a really grumpy man he was a veteran He'd, he'd been in a couple of wars. He was in the Navy, and he was just like the typical crusty veteran. And <clears throat> last night, I was talking to him in the dream. And he's actually been coming to me a lot lately, which is so strange. 
considering he's not someone that I thought would uh, be a part of my spirit team because he was kind of against, you know, my journey through paranormal. But in the dream last night, I said, you know, I don't have the fondest memories of you um, growing up. And um, can I just give you that? Can you give me a perspective from your side why you were so angry? Like, although it's weird because I was favorited by my uncle and that wasn't something you would necessarily brag about because he kind of just disliked everyone. He, he obviously married into the family and um, he wasn't blood from the family. And, you know, a lot of my cousins, I've talked about having alcohol, substance abuse issues, and he just couldn't stand anybody because they were all a mess. And my uncle, um, he was full-blooded Hispanic, okay? Um, his, fir his first official name was Santiago. Um, he was bilingual. He, was, he can speak Spanish and English. Um, and he grew up in the slums of Pueblo, uh, Colorado. And Pueblo's a rough area. It's known as a stopping point for drug trafficking, essentially. And it's very poor, or most of the area is very poor. He grew up on a farm in Pueblo with like eight kids, very, very poor. He would literally have to, you know, uh, you know, milk his own cow if he wanted breakfast in the morning. Uh, that was how he grew up. And when he turned 18, he joined the military so that he could sort of escape poverty and get away. And, um, you know, he had a hard life, obviously, going a veteran going to war. He ended up having a stroke uh, at a very young age. Half of his face was kind of slanted from the stroke. And um, he just really did not like most of my family. I was favorited because he knew that I was, um, basically I was the only one that was like going to school, passing my classes, graduated, you know, and because of that, he favorited me. And that was another reason I was black sheep from the family because, you know, my uncle was known for being a hard ass and not a very pleasant person. And they couldn't figure out what I was doing that was so perfect, you know, to make him like me. But once again, that wasn't something necessarily to brag about. I also think as a kid, you know, my mom always taught me to really understand and respect other people, you know, culture. And he grew up full-blooded Hispanic. You know, he had a whole different life than, than our family did. And I think I just enjoyed hearing his stories. He grew up on a farm. He grew up with animals. Um, he just had a different life. And I would listen to him. And so I think that is what established that relationship from youth. Anyway, last night in the dream, I said, why were you so angry all the time? You know, was it war? What was it? Because he doesn't, he isn't like that now at all. And he said, your aunt was an alcoholic. He's like, imagine what it was like as a husband to be married to an alcoholic. And he goes, you know, I vowed to marry her and stay with her till death do you part. And that doesn't mean it made me happy having to live with an alcoholic every day because my uncle was sober, very completely sober. And I didn't realize till last night to see it from his perspective. And for some reason, it was like all the dots clicked. You know what I mean? He also said, even though your aunt was an alcoholic in that lifetime, he goes, I don't hold on to resentment for it. He goes, that was just the way that it played out. And he goes, I don't think about bad or dark memories. And I said, wow, interesting. So this has been reiterated through multiple family members that I've had on the other side. He said this specifically, I wrote this down, holding on to sad memories or bad memories, that's a human thing. I had this guy um, that wrote me on Facebook and he talked to me about how much my podcast helped him because he said that his daughter died of an overdose. And he said that um, he has a lot of guilt and resentment that he couldn't save her. And, and I feel you because with my mom being killed, um, it caught, I mean, I was beating on every door. I went to the news stations. Like I was, I felt like I was screaming in the middle of Times Square and nobody was looking. And so I understand that guilt and resentment, but it's not like that on the other side. It's what my uncle said is you're holding on to that as a human thing. That is a human emotion. Once they've crossed over and they go home, it's just not the same anymore. It's just not. I'm trying to figure out the words, um... You know, when you go through a traumatic experience, whatever it is, for me it was, um, you know, my mother being killed, you have to figure out how to heal through it. And I think that losing a child is probably one of the hardest um, ex things to experience on this planet. Like, I don't think it would matter if it was a four-year-old or a 20-year-old. I just feel like parents are not supposed to bury their children ever. So I think under any circumstance, it would be very, very difficult. But, you know, I want to reiterate what my mom said to me when she died. 
you know, my mom was on life support for like 11 days before I took her off life support. I, you know, I, I told you guys in a podcast that she came to me and told me when to take her off of life support. My mom had crossed over um, like within 24 hours when she had been put on life support. She was not in her body. And um, she came to me in a dream and said, they're trying to heal my body. And she was talking about her spirit team and her... Um, uh, her angels, because let me tell you, miracles exist, okay? She could have come back and been 100% healed. The problem was, is that my mother said, I went back, I looked at my life blueprint before I came here, and there are certain things, like all of us have this big checklist. We have major checklists of things that we want to accomplish and little checklists. And she said, I looked at my checklist and I had accomplished every single thing I needed to do while I was there. There was no reason for me to come back. And I know that's really hard for people to understand, but like even your daughter dying of an overdose, she could have had the option to come back. Anybody can. Bashar even talks about this. Bashar says that many of you have already died. Many of you have had a near-death experience. And you get to decide if you want to come back and continue and complete the experience or are you done did you complete what you finished and I think it's really hard as human to accept that because you know humans we're so grounded into the 3d in society and we want to control everything around us we want to control everything that we're doing we want to control other people you have a child that's sick a mother that's sick you you can heal them I can fix this but even if the child is four years old they get to go home and make the decision if they've completed their journey or not. And, you know, this is going to be difficult to hear too, but in some instances, children were only supposed to incarnate for a short amount of time. There was some sort of, you know, I don't want to say life lesson, but a soul contract between you and that person and that child. And maybe your journey in this life was to heal from that child's death. That is your purpose, is how do I pick up and go on? Because then when you cross over and go to the other side, you get to teach and tell souls exactly what you learned and how you experienced that lesson. And I know, and I'm not saying that to sound um, cruel or without empathy, because obviously what I've gone through with my mother, I'm extremely empathetic. But... You know, when my mom crossed over and she started visiting me in dreams, and I've said this before, she told me, I don't care. And I was like, what do you, like, what, what do you mean, mom? Like, you were murdered. Like, you were killed. Like, you were intentionally killed. Like, how can you not care? She's like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't think about it. I don't want to think about it. I don't care. And I could never understand that. And from other family that I've experienced it, Christian, okay, Christian, was my uh, Christian was a high school boyfriend I had for many years. I was in love with him. I love that man to this day. He came to me in a dream. And Chris, this was a long time ago, though. Christian came to me in a dream and told me that he was actually murdered. And I, I'm in the dream freaking out. And I said, what do you mean you were murdered? Tell me who did it. I will go hold them accountable. He's like, I don't care. It's over. I've decided to come home, and it doesn't matter. So all I'm saying is when a soul crosses over, no matter how traumatic it is, they don't care what happened on earth. But yet here we are, still in this meat suit, sitting here holding on to their trauma. And I think that was the big lesson for my guides and why they felt like <clears throat> teaching you guys how to communicate with the other side is just so important to be able to connect. This is something I channeled directly from my guides that I'm gonna tell you guys, it says, we want to remind you that no matter how traumatic death is on this planet, you don't think about that when you cross over. Uh, they brought up my mother. They said she does not care how she died. And she said that that person, that person will face their fate when they cross over. They will meet their maker as we say. Remember, if you're a bad human on earth, your higher self will destroy you. You will be reabsorbed by your higher self and then rebirthed. So if someone gets killed by someone, understand that the fates take over. The fates will take care of it. Don't worry about it. What happens to something like an overdose? So this is something my guides came, came through. <clears throat> my guides said, and I'm verbatim just reading this. Could you have saved her? No. We cannot save the outcome of anyone's fate. I blamed myself for my mother. They have the option of coming back in. We choose our own fate and no one can change or stop that. Survivor's guilt does not exist. 
because the person chose their own fate. And then I asked, I literally said, wheel of fate, question mark. And they said, it exists. Even for mom, and they meant my mom, and said, we have several exit points throughout our life that we write in on our blueprint where we can exit at any given time. We choose when our exit is, young or old, period. And then literally they said, Christian, death, exit. I mean, that's very, very clear. So, you know, and I, I actually asked Christian when I was channeling, I said, you know, can you be more specific? When you say that you choose the outcome of your death, do you choose to die by murder? You know, like my mother and Christian? Is that something you wrote in the blueprint? And Christian said, no, no, I didn't choose to be murdered. But he said it was, it was considered an exit point. I had done everything I needed to do and I did not come back. And I said, okay. The same went for my mom. She didn't choose to be murdered but she did accomplish everything and she chose not to return. Okay, so now I'm going to start talking about how to, to get connected to sort of your higher self and understanding that there's a process that you have to practice and reiterate every day. So you might wanna get a pen and paper so that you can write these down. So they, they reiterated a lot <clears throat> last night about rooting into the 3D too much. I mean, I think they wrote that five or six times throughout this, okay? And I said, first, give me an example. And so they showed me this YouTube comment. Yesterday, I've been really pushing um, shorts on YouTube, and it's been, I've got like 500 subscribers in like a few days. It was like really weird. And then I got like 100,000 views in a couple days, like, because it's boosting all of the old content. So I'm, I'm really just trying to play with the algorithm on YouTube right now. And there was some guy that showed up on one of our paranormal videos. And... Um, essentially he was making fun of Chanel, which is a girl that used to work with me in Ghost Girl Diaries, and basically calling her BS that she didn't know what she was doing while she was communicating with the other side. And this man left probably two paragraphs on the YouTube channel. And the amount of time that it took for this man to write this out was astonishing, right? Like it wasn't just your stupid enter, it was like a lot. And you know, the first thing I thought, and I, I removed him from the channel because I don't need that, you know, I don't need Chanel to be made fun of. I'm not going to be made fun of either. But um, this man said, um, basically, like, it was all BS. And like, oh, if the afterlife, this, 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 and this. And I thought to myself, how sad. This man is so rooted into the 3D. He will never experience the other side. And let me just say that when you open your third eye and your crown chakra and you can connect to source, your higher self, your spirit team, whoever you want to call, if you want to call it God, the universe, it doesn't matter. It's magic. It is My, my life in the last six, six months has been absolute magic, right? And I could only sit there and look at this comment and feel absolute just devastation for this man because he ranted. And, and I'm sorry, but if you're writing that much hate, there's got to be something in the back of his mind that is interested in paranormal. How did he happen to stumble across this channel, right? So being too rooted into the 3D is the biggest problem, is what my guides have reiterated. And, and I know you need an example of that. We have a lot of weird things going on on this planet right now. I think we can all collectively agree that. I mean, start, start 2020, you know, with the whole planet shutting down due to you know, the Rona virus going on. And then, you know, the economy's bad and the gas prices were hiked up and then groceries were hiked up and, you know, everyone's feeling the pain of this going on. And then, then you throw in all of these political agendas that are happening. And right now that's going on is all the Diddy cases. And then, you know, people get, you know, with the media, we tend to read into all of these dark things that are going on around us. But the pro and, and I'm not saying to not be aware. I'm not saying to not be aware, right? Like you need to know what's going on. You need to be knowledgeable. Keep yourself knowledgeable. However, the more you keep <clears throat> reading and buying into all of the negativity and the darkness, the lower your vibration will continue to drop. So it is okay to hear about what's going on and, and understand politics, but you have to still make sure that you're plugged into source. Like sometimes <clears throat> during the day, I'll be working, right? 
and I'll be doing something, whatever. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm really like balls deep in something and it's a stressful situation because it's just normal human things. And I'll look over and I'll see one of my guides standing by me and they go like this and they tap their third eye. And what they're saying is you're too deep in this. You need to reconnect to source. And I'm like, oh, okay, got it, got it. Go back to source, get out of the 3D. So, I mean, that's something I'm still, I don't think that we're going to ever be perfect with that because of how heavy and dense this planet is. So don't beat yourself up about it, but you need to be aware of when you've gone too far down the rabbit hole. You know, you're feeding too much, you're watching way too much news, media outlets. You've got to reconnect to source. And remember that if you want to see change in the world, the first change has to start from within you, right? And they also said when people die in your life, that is the worst time you root into the 3D. Um, which is interesting because when my mom died, I, I thought I was a mess. I thought I was an absolute mess. And um, they were forcing me to go to the other side every night and have these interactions so that obviously when I woke up in May, all of a sudden I had mediumship abilities, right? And I'm really happy and grateful they did that because without those experiences on the other side, I wouldn't have been able to take on the responsibility of what it's like connecting that way as a psychic medium, right? Anyone can communicate with the other side. I've asked my guides. So my guides said anyone can communicate with the other side and they told me to use my friends as an example because I kind of used them as guinea pigs. So uh, let's see, starting in June, I had a really weird experience. Obviously, you know, I woke up with psychic medium abilities in like the middle of May, 2024. I was, it took me about a month to get used to what was happening. And because before I could only communicate with my guides and the other side of my dreams, but now it was like direct information. Like it's like putting a phone call, you know, like plugging into the right transporter sort of situation. And when I started telling some of my friends about it in June, they were just fascinated with what I was doing and asked me to teach them how. And so I did. I started teaching them exactly what I'm about to sh t share with you guys. And I think, you know, there's a couple of things. My friend Lisa, um, when she started listening to everything that I was giving her on advice, she started seeing numbers everywhere, numerology. She was seeing 111 on license plates, 222. Like, she was freaking me out. She's calling me, texting me. You know, like, so that is signs you're plugged into source. You're directly plugged into source. They're giving you signs. Even, even numbers like 1331 or, you know, mirroring numbers, 313. Like, all of those mean things. And you need to Google them as you're going. And it's basically them giving you confirmations on your path. And then Josh, obviously, I've talked about Josh before. He started out as, with security with me for GGD. And then now he does um, camera work. But I started teaching Josh. Now, the funny part, and Josh has even said this. Josh said, I am probably the hardest person to, to plug into source. He's a Air Force veteran, right? He's been through war, a few wars. He's deployed. He's been through a lot. And he was like, teach me, I wanna know, I wanna know. So I started teaching him, and one night he was dri I was like, you have to start watching for signs. One night he was driving home, he asked his spirit team something out loud while he was in his truck. And all of a sudden the radio frequency changed and he heard their voices coming through the radio. And he freaked out, he called me screaming at like 11 o'clock at night, oh my God, you're not gonna believe what happened. Like he was just so excited about it, so, my point, and, and it's weird because like Lisa doesn't talk to Josh. Lisa's in Colorado. Josh is in Arkansas. And I actually did it with about six friends and none of them talk to each other. They're all in different states. So that's how I know that this works. But remember, you have to actively practice this every single day. So that's why I'm telling you guys, get ready to write this down. Lowering your vibration. So as a human, our vibration is very low compared to spirit, okay? And... If you want to communicate with them, they cannot really lower their vibration to talk to us. When we're investigating and doing ghost hunts and we're in a haunted you know, asylum, whatever, the reason we can hear them moving and talking to us is they're on a plane, like a dimension that's really close to Earth. They're in the gray zone. They haven't fully crossed over. 
So that's why we're able to hear them audibly with our ears. If you're wanting to connect to Source and your spirit guides and your spirit team, you have to do the work to, to level up your vibration so that you can talk to them. They cannot come down and meet you. It, my guides said that's impossible. So this work is all on you. They said this, Earth is a very heavy, dense planet that cannot meet you at your existence. You have to meet them at theirs and be very mindful of everything you're doing and thinking every single day. So the first thing they said is negative belief patterns and negative self-talk. If you are doubting yourself, talking bad to yourself, talking down to yourself in any capacity, if you're in an abusive relationship where someone's making you feel bad about yourself, you are lowering your vibration. And that is, you can't, you have to stop. So I started that in December. Every time I would have a negative thought process where I was doubting myself or saying, oh, I should have done this instead of that, I would be like, no, and I would shut it off and I would replace it with a positive thought. That is step one. But let me tell you, that's something that's gonna take a few months for you to get out of, you have to keep working on every time. It's like shadow work, it's like active shadow work. Every time you have a negative thought or a bad thought, you have to replace it with a positive one. Listen to your intuition every single time. Do not question it or spirit will not think you are ready. That's what they said. So, for example, have you ever done something where you're like, I should have taken the long way home instead of the short way because then you go the short way and there's like a really bad accident and then you're caught up for an hour? That was your higher self communicating with you. And I'm sure you've had those experiences where you're like on autopilot mode and all of a sudden you realize you took the wrong turn but like in the later there was like a really bad accident or something that happened that was your higher self taking over so don't get creeped out by it you have to trust those intuitive moments or you know have you ever been in the presence of people my mom used to hate this about me you know i i realized like last night i had this talk with my guides and they were going you know it was kind of like with my family they were sharing these stories about me and, and them on earth and then my guides started showing me examples throughout my whole life where i've always had psychic medium abilities but i didn't call it that i didn't know that's what it was my mom used to get so mad at me as a kid i'm talking like eight nine years old okay i would be in the presence of somebody maybe one of her friends and i didn't like them and it would piss my mom off and we'd be sitting in the room and i'd go silent and later, my mom would be like, you know, you're really rude. You should, you know, not treat people like that. And my mom's like, why would you, you know, treat my friend like that? I'm like, I don't know. I don't like her. And she's like, why? I'm like, her energy. I don't know. I have always intuitively. So my point is, trust your intuition. If someone's in your energy, your boss, your coworker, whatever, and you just get a bad vibe, trust it. Don't question it. Just trust. stop questioning. When you have something happen in your mind, the, the second you question it, that is the wrong answer. Questioning it is the wrong answer. So what my guide said verbatim, listening to your intuition every single time. Do not question it or spirit will not think you are ready. Looking for signs, numerology, earth angels, synchronicity. So like I told you, start looking for numbers in your life. If you need, my, I, what I told Josh and Lisa, I said, start talking out loud to your guides. You don't have to do it around your family. You don't have to do it around other people or your significant other. So Lisa and Josh specifically started to ask questions to their guides out loud in their car. Hey, I have a question. I need you to give me a sign if I should do this or that. They were getting answers instantly, but you have to look for the answers. And sometimes, I told you guys, it takes a couple days for your 3D to catch up. Sometimes you won't get an instant answer, especially if you're really new to this. So you need to be patient, you can't give up. You have to think of your psychic ability, your third eye, your crown chakra, like a muscle, right? Like. Like, like, let's say you want to go into the Olympics for gymnastics. Simone Biles, do you think that she got to the Olympics overnight? No, she had to train that muscle every single day. She was at the gym doing her gymnastics, and then she made it to the Olympics. If you want to connect to the other side, your family, your spirit team, it is a muscle, and you have to practice it mindfully every single day. Earth angels, these are people that randomly come up to you on the street. I still have people that do this for me, right? They'll just randomly come up and say, you know, I even had the other day, I was like, oh, I look terrible. I don't feel good. I don't feel like myself. I was just thought I was getting a cold. And this person comes up to me and she's like, you're just so beautiful. I just wanted to let you know. To me, that was an earth angel saying, stop worrying. You're going to be okay. I know you don't feel well, but like stop stressing about how you look, right? So the littlest tiny thing, it's important to pay attention to all those signs. My guides also said for the utmost abundance in your life, 
you have to be living your highest purpose. There's just no question about it. If you're at a nine to five and you hate it, it you're going to, you're going to be miserable. You're lowering your vibration. So whatever your passion is, that's the only way you're going to find abundance period. And if you trust in the universe, you have to learn to make it happen. Look for synchronicities. My guides said specifically, coincidence, uh, and I can hear him saying it right now, coincidences do not exist. So any moment you say, oh, it was a coincidence, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. That was your spirit team stepping in. There's a, so many times, almost every single day, where you, you know, have two options. I can do this or that. Even, like, food options for lunch. Whatever you're going to, like, that's your higher self guiding you. I'm telling you. The little voice in your head, that's your higher self. Checking in with your chakras and meditation. Okay, so this is something that I didn't learn till May. And that was specifically when I was you know, waking up with mediumship abilities. And I always have to connect to the third eye. Like when my guide, I can, she's standing right here. She's going right here. She'll literally do a circle, okay? Or even sometimes they'll pat the head. Now, I feel like when you're, when you're in tune with your higher self, it's more of the crown chakra. But when you're tapped into really what's going on around you and not connected to the 3D, it's your it's your third eye. And the way that you can test this is you're sitting there right now. You're listening to this podcast. You're watching this YouTube video. Tell me right now where you feel the most energy in your body. You can sit there in silence for a minute. Scan your body from head to toe. Now, most people are going to say their stomach's upset or their back hurts. And that's because you're way too rooted into, you know, the back is your root chakra, right? Like that's your root, your tailbone. And your stomach is usually not feeling safe, not feeling at ease. You know, your solar plexus are really important. But unfortunately, being on this planet, those are the two most affected places, right? If you're in pain from a relationship, you're going to feel it in your chest, right? Chest pain. Maybe you're not feeling good about how your, your love life is going, right? So you need to really start scanning your body. And that will tell you, too. Like, sometimes I'll be sitting. I did it the other day. I was sitting in my Jeep, and <clears throat> I got cut off by a car, and I freaked out. And they, like, just missed me. And I had, like, this horrible stomach ache. And all of a sudden, I felt my guide just tap me on my forehead, and it was like, Oh, I got so stressed. I got too rooted in my, you know, solar plexus. That's what causes sickness, illness, you know, anxiety, depression. So just be careful how you root into that because that's when you need to check back in. Bring It also tells you, in my opinion, where your energy level is at. You should always, 90% of the time, be interacting out of your, like, you know, third eye or crown chakra. If you're throughout the day and it's anywhere lower, that is a low vibration. So you need to be very careful with that, okay? Meditation does help with this. What you're consuming and putting in your body, exercise, food, alcohol, drugs, they, that will all lower your vibration. I'm not telling you need to go you know, eat and live like a rabbit and only have salads. I'm not saying that. We can all have cheat days. But exercise moves energy. Exercise moves dormant energy, right? And I mean, I feel like I can talk about this because, you know, I've had weight issues, right? I fluctuated with my weight a lot because I witnessed my parents having a very toxic relationship as a child. And the only thing I could control was the food that went in my mouth. Bad food like cookies and pasta gave me endorphins. Endorphins made me happy and happy people don't kill their husbands, like Elle Woods said. And that ended up causing my weight to fluctuate a lot, right? So I had to get older and get in control of my weight and realize that obesity, in my case, was representative of not feeling safe. And the only thing that made me feel safe was food. That lowers your vibration. So you really have to get yourself in check and respect. I just heard my guide say you have to respect your body, that it's a temple. Your body is a temple. It is a temporary vessel that's on rental right now. It is not yours. It's on rental, so take care of it. They also reiterated that relationships, bad relationships that drain you, media that you're consuming affects your vibration. Even music is technically spells that can also affect your vibration. Um, they also said to play affirmation playlists like on Spotify to rewire your brain. Rewrite your brain from society and its low vibrations. Shadow work, having boundaries with people, saying no, understanding that it's a full sentence without an explanation, and learning to forgive yourself for your past. Understanding that yesterday no longer exists. Remember when I talked about the Wheel of Fate? 
Do you remember when I talked about that? And I was in the room of my fate, and the guy was showing me this big belt, and he could do everything except rewind it. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. It's not coming back. You'll never get yesterday back. It's gone. Don't worry about it. Just don't worry about yesterday, right? It will make you sick. The past will make you sick. It will literally kill you. The only, and, and the future will also kill you because it doesn't exist yet either. Literally, the only time that you're given is today. You could die tomorrow. What my guides mean by that is, why are you sitting there being miserable when only today is guaranteed? You have to be happy because you chose to incarnate. Yes, it's tough. Yes, it's hard. But is it possibly because you're not living your highest passion? If you can connect to source and you can connect to divine, they will help you. I was sitting here editing this podcast and there was just one little thing that I forgot that I kind of left out during this podcast. And sometimes when I'm doing these podcasts, I think that I'm not even really there. Like the, I'm watching myself and I listen to myself after I film these and I realize it's like my whole higher self has stepped in and I'm, I'm not even there. So anyway, I'm, I'm just wanting to let you know that the, if you start hiring your vibration, you stop with the lower vibrations. The next step is to start asking your guides out loud for assistance, for help. And also you have to share gratitude every single day because that also creates a higher vibration within your body. Even if you can thank you know, your guides or your higher self for your dog. If it's as simple as that, if it's as simple as the food that you had for lunch, whatever, it doesn't have to be big. Because remember, the, the universe does not speak in money. It doesn't speak in actual money. It speaks in abundance. So if you feel like your life is abundant right now and you have everything that you have right now, you will only continue to get more abundance. They only communicate in abundance and gratitude. But eventually, you know, you can always ask for signs in your dreams. And if you're not comfortable, you know, I told my friends this, I said, start asking your guides out loud, because that's going to start determining how you communicate with your guides, you're, you have to sort of establish, uh, you know, the line of communication, because you've sort of been a dormant vessel, and you haven't been communicating until now. Eventually, I'm sure that telepathic communication can happen, psychic abilities, mediumship, I'm sure you'll see things, you know, you'll have to tell your guides what it is you're desiring with your gifts. But it will have to start with you either talking out loud or even journaling. My friend Lisa started journaling, asking questions to her guides and journals. And now she's actually doing full-blown automatic writing. Okay, so once again, remember, everyone's gifts are different, but this is how we start. You have to keep your vibration high. You have to give gratitude and you have to start speaking and communicating with them out loud to, you know, determine and create that sort of initial line of communication with them and it will only continue to grow from there this was interesting they said living in the moment talk about your weight loss your body is begging you to release that trauma how you treat others and animals also affects your vibration be the change that you want to see in others that's a very strong statement so and last night when i was writing this out four in the morning they were showing me is there something that i'll say out loud to my guides something that bothers me is homeless people like i just hate seeing people suffer and oftentimes I'll say out loud to myself like you know God bless me so I can bless others you know and then I'll hear my guide say do what you can when you can so for example there was a man and a woman and I definitely think the female was on drugs but that wasn't going to stop me from helping them we just don't know people's stories or their lives and it's really not our part to judge and they were outside of Big Lots and they also had a pit bull and they were pulling the pit bull in this huge like um, it was like a wagon and I walked up to them and I said hey you know can I buy you guys like some dog food and some snacks and they said oh yeah that would that would be so great I said is there any requests and he said he wanted pretzels and the woman said she liked um, just fruit snacks so I went in and I probably spent fifty dollars which isn't really that much but I got him a bunch of jugs of water because I knew they had the wagon um, I got them dog food, dog snacks, dog bowl, a, a collar, um, a leash. I got them a bunch of snacks for them as well. And I also bought them two umbrellas that they could prop up for the dog. And one was for them to carry because it was really hot that day. Like it gets 110 degrees in Vegas. And the other umbrella was for the dog. For the, um, I just love humans that care about their animals. And I wish I could have done more for them, but my guides always say, do what you can when you can. There's another guy that sometimes hangs around Del Taco and he's homeless. Some days I catch him and I'll give him like 
you know, I, I will go buy the food and give him, you know, a Sprite and like four tacos. And some days I don't catch him. And I just reiterating, do what you can when you can. Even those little bit of changes, you may have just helped that person in that moment for that day. And that was enough, right? Be the change that you want to see in others. Law of karma exists, my guide said, and you'll be rewarded for good karma. Uh, rooting too much in the 3D is a problem. Rinse and repeat and be aware every single day of your actions and what, what you're thinking. Be aware of your mind. The more you practice this, the more the stronger you become, the more that you can connect to source, is what my guide said. Okay, this is interesting. My guides wanted me to talk about waking up in the afterlife. I was going to do a podcast about this a week, or it was probably more like a month ago now, but um, there was one night that I went to bed. So if I do sleep deprivation, so if I put um, a sleeping mask, black sleeping mask on my face, and I put a pillow over my head and cover my ear, and I don't mean like suffocate myself, but just to basically block out not even white noise, it's just utter silence, and I fall asleep that way, it's almost like L from, um, or I'm sorry, 11 from Stranger Things. If I'm in like a deprivation tank like that, essentially, I will immediately wake up on the other side. I learned that the last couple of years while, you know, communicating with my mom. And so about a month ago, I, that's how I go to sleep every night because I enjoy being on the other side. And I woke up and I was on the other side, but I woke up. I mean, I actually woke up. It wasn't like a dream or spirit form. And I, my guides wanted me to share this with you for some reason. So you know, here I'm in Vegas, it's 11 o'clock at night, it's dark. On the other side, I wake up, I'm in like almost like a twin size bed. It's a very light, bright room. And I sit up in bed. I mean, I straight up sit up in bed. I am awake on the other side in my actual vessel. Okay. And I don't know what's going on. Basically, I'm panicked. I'm looking around. And I see a man sitting at the end of my bed who was like a guide. And this person essentially watches over your form on the other side while you're incarnating. And then there were other people in the room, like maybe uh, there was medical equipment. So I'm not sure if it's doctors. I'm not sure how it works. I, I can't really give you that feedback because I, I don't really have those answers right now. But I woke up on the other side and I was freaked out and panicked. Well, that's not supposed to happen. Okay, you're not supposed to do that. Okay, so I'm up. I'm like breathing heavy. I'm wide awake in this bed and I realize exactly what's going on. I'm excited to be honest because I'm back in my like my body on the other side. This is like where I actually live full time, you know, and they went into a frenzy. They panicked. All these people start rushing over. They push me back down. I was not supposed to wake up. I was not supposed to wake up and I, so I think what happens somehow, I obviously I'm, I don't know how this works because I'm not the universe, um, but when I experience the other side, I'm in somewhat of a spirit form because once again, magic exists, anything exists. And um, my guide said to me, um, that's what happens when you die. When you die, you wake up on the other side. And it, it feels like you're having a dream on this earth. And I said, can you explain it more? And they said, you know, on earth, you feel like you've lived for 70 to 100 years. But it's only like two weeks time on the other side. And during those two weeks, you're in this room where you're being watched and monitored by medical equipment, medical officials to make sure you're safe. And basically, you're having a dream that you're on earth. And I said, so... You're basically making it sound like Earth's not real. And they said that's the perception of the reality is your life on Earth is essentially a dream that you're having on the other side. And that was why you weren't supposed to wake up. I don't know if you guys can comprehend what I just said. I hope it makes sense. Um, I, I'm sure that I'll have more information on that later. But there's a reason that they, they wrote that in. So I, I told you. I'm going to read verbatim what they said. Waking up in the afterlife. You're in spirit form right now having a dream that you're not. You're in spirit form right now, having a dream that you are human on earth. And when you wake up on the other side, you go, whoa, that was an effed up dream. I had to go pay taxes on that little tiny floating rock out in the middle of nowhere. 
And then they also reiterated this. You are a spirit in a meat suit on a floating rock, spinning at thousands of miles an hour, and somehow we're not flying off that spinning rock. Fear nothing. They said literally verbatim, what do you have to lose? This is not home, so make the most of your experience here. Except that there are multiple perceptions of reality that exist. We are all not having the same experience on Earth right now because we're not meant to. Whew, that is deep. Um, and then this is when they told me, you've always had psychic abilities. And this is also when they wanted to talk about um, death and Bashar and near-death experiences. There's a... Um, near-death experience trend that's happening right now on TikTok and thousands of people are partaking in it and I'm fascinated by it and it's a trending sound where basically people are talking about I believe I died in a car wreck in 2017 I'm not supposed to be here right now I remember my death I remember dying and this connects to Bashar saying many of you have already died but you chose to magically you know come back and continue to to develop your experience for whatever reason for a number of abilities you decided to come back. So the reason I'm bringing this up is um, I believe I actually died in 2023. And the only person on this planet that knows about that is Kat. I woke up in June of 2023. I had had so much depression from my mother's death. Um, and I did not know how to, to heal from it. I did not feel like I was going to heal from it. And I felt like I was a lost human. And I just felt like there was no way I was going to get through it. And I know that I was still uploading and I was still doing TikTok, but like you didn't really see what was going on. And I went to bed one night in June and I woke up the next day and I did not feel like the same person. And I called Kat and I bawled my eyes out with her on the phone. I'm sure she remembers this phone call. And I told her that... I felt like I swapped places with another version of myself. I think that that person could not handle the death and trauma of my mom and she had to go home and heal and another alternate version of myself stepped in. I'm not kidding, I had this conversation and I wasn't gonna talk to you guys about this because until I started seeing this trending on TikTok and I was like, oh my God, I feel amazing. I, I know what I experienced. And knowing that there's other people, thousands of people out there that have experienced the same thing, I can talk about it. And if you guys remember, I was doing podcasts and I said I woke up and felt like I wasn't goth anymore. I felt like I didn't identify with that person anymore. And then I had my, you know, really cool collaboration with Elvira. And Elvira had told me... You don't have to be goth all the time. Like I think she's psychic and doesn't realize it because she really tuned into my energy. And I felt bad because it wasn't that I, I didn't want to be goth. Like I'm still fine with doing gothic and alternative makeup looks. But it was like I was every day that person and I couldn't couldn't be her anymore. I wasn't her. Like quite literally, like I I would look at pictures of myself. Like if I go to my Instagram, okay. And I look at this picture of February 13th of 2023. I do not recognize that person. I do not know her. That is a different version of myself. I know that sounds crazy, but like the girl that, and I love my makeup. Like it's not that I, this girl, don't know her. She's gone. She left the building. She literally couldn't handle her mom's death and she's gone. This person right now is a totally different version of myself. And I never felt more validated when I started seeing people talk about this online. And this is when my guide said, the universe is literally magic. You get to live your life exactly the way you want, the way you dream of it. Manifest it if you trust and let go. Speak it out into existence. Tell your spirit team exactly what you want. Make sure you're specific and detailed. That is their job to make sure that it happens. But in order to make sure it happens, you have to match their vibration. But if you don't believe that any of this is possible, then you are the creator of your own reality, and that is also true. And they also told me to talk about quitting my job. So about a week ago, like I had a bunch of little side gigs that I was doing, and I've talked about it on TikTok. I was doing... Um, social media management for random companies like because I'm good at social media and I was teaching people how to get their social media going and 
honestly, I wasn't doing it for the money. Like, luckily my mom left me pretty well off from an inheritance that she left me. I was doing it, though, more for, like, community engagement and community involvement and, like, being around people and just trying to, like, learn to human again after my experience with her death. And I've been guided for weeks. I've been getting dreams from my guides, like, you've got to quit these jobs. You've got to quit everything, and you've got to go back to Ghost Girl Diaries, or it's never going to happen. And I was like, I don't think I want to do that. Like, once again, it's not really about the money, but it was like, I just, I don't think I want to do that. And they kept saying, quit, quit, quit. So the first week of October, the eclipse, I woke up one day and said, I'm quitting. I'm quitting all the side jobs. I'm going back to social media and YouTube and Ghost Girl full time. And I'm scared shitless, but I'm going to do it anyways. And five minutes after I did that, I got like a contract for modeling company again. It, I mean, I, literally five minutes after I quit all my jobs, I put in my like termination letters. Obviously, I'm, I'm leaving on a good foot. But it, it was like five minutes. My guides were like, okay, well, now that you did that, good job. You got right back on track. We, you know, they're saying do the fashion, the makeup, and the paranormal. And I was like, holy crap. And then now that I'm sleeping and I'm a little bit rested, I'm, I realized taking on all these side hustles, I was putting my energy into the wrong things. I was a little bit splayed out too many places. And now that I'm able to sort of quiet my mind and refocus back on Ghost Girl Diaries, They've been coming in at night with messages on exactly what I need to do with the podcast and the YouTube channel. And it, I wasn't getting those messages before. So if I wouldn't have quit those jobs, I wouldn't be able to you know, see exactly what my future is meant to look like. Your abilities will become so strong that it's like making a phone call to the other side. All you have to do is tune in to that specific radio frequency. But you have to be persistent and keep practicing this. My guides also said, don't be afraid once you open this door, because once they know that you're open and you're paying attention, it's like a revolving door and it doesn't just shut. They will try to keep getting messages in over and over. And also, don't ignore the fact that um, sometimes you're not going to get the answer that you want. You know, if you're asking, like, should I stay with this person or not? And then they tell you, no, don't get mad at your spirit guides. And I, another lesson I've learned with my spirit team is if I ask them for an answer and I rebel against them and I do what they the opposite, they will give me a lesson that is 10 times worse. So if you decide to start connecting with your spirit team, you also need to learn to respect them and have a respectful line of communication where you trust that, you know, they are in that position for a reason. But like, if you don't respect them and trust them when you're asking them for guidance, they will not give you easy lessons. So that's just a warning ahead of time. Speak out loud, they said. Ask for signs. Ask for communication. Be very specific. Everyone's gifts are different. Everyone will have a different type of superpower, they said. Best time to channel and communicate with us as your guides or your family is right before you sleep or right when you wake up because that's when you're in a total meditative state and your brain is shut off. That's really it. That's, that's the podcast. I hope that you guys practice this because I think that if you can connect with the other side and also keep a dream journal, you know what I mean? Like if you have a child that's crossed over and they come to you in a dream and it was very specific and you remember everything, you need to start waking up and, and write everything down, even in your phone, whatever it takes. Don't forget those moments. And it will also show you a progression over time of like, okay, I, was, I wasn't getting a lot of information at first, but now look at the signs that I'm getting. But don't question yourself. Just don't question yourself. You can also set boundaries with your guides. Back in May, I was seeing, um, you know, spirits that had died in their death form and sometimes that can be very traumatic so I asked my guides to block that out because I don't want to see anything gory whatever you tell them you need or want it is their job to fulfill that it is their job to do that so I hope this podcast helps I don't know why this was such a rush it is now 10 12 p.m. and I'm tired because I ate a funnel cake um, and I need to go to sleep because I'm probably having a sugar coma I can't wait to hear how you guys progress, but don't think you can do this for one day and it's over. Remember Simone Biles. You have to practice this constantly, constantly. It, you have to work the muscle or it's not gonna go. All right, I'm tired guys. I love you, good night.
life for the dead.